course, all of our local teams were uh, in the area. We had 13 teams of our 15 playing at home and two teams featuring double area game matchup. So we didn't have to travel too far and uh, it was a pretty interesting opening week. There were some winners and some losers. Yeah, Chippewa beat Mapleton 47-7. Nice debut for new coach Mike Boley. And the Chips had only won one game in the last three years. Loudonville 48, Smithville 6, Northwestern 50, Crestview 21, Malachi Noletti and Tyler Smith. Huge opening games for them. Norway 47, Wellington 7. All Joe Dreyer did was pick up on his record-setting year by going 16 for 17, passing over 300 yards. Orville 42, John Marshall 6. They got their first win on their turf at Heartland Field after a real down year last year. Uh, West Holmes 54, Triway 35, Lane Perone 267 yards rushing, four touchdowns behind a line that was supposed to be real green, but obviously they're starting off strong. It was nice to see Waynedale after a winning, winless season. They beat Tusky Valley 18-8 as Ren Weaver top 200 yards rushing and got two touchdowns, Mike. Well, on the flip side of that, Aaron, uh, Dalton lost. 35-28 to Garraway. Uh, the Bulldogs looking to bounce back and get back to where they used to be. Uh, Manchester 8, Hillsdale 6. Hillsdale loses a heartbreaker in a real slugfest. Their star running back, Corbin Major, has been a little dinged up with a bad ankle. Uh, Worcester had another bad opener under Doug Haas, um, getting manhandled by Medina Highland, really on both sides of the ball. I think you got to credit Highland. That's going to be a pretty good football team, I think, this year. And a lot of the kids from Worcester were just getting their first taste of Friday night action. She touched on Triway. Um, they basically got run over last week by West Holmes, but they should be a little bit better this week. And I know that they're going to want to eliminate the turnovers. They had four interceptions. Rittman, uh, not only did Rittman lose a winnable game against Akron North 42 to 34, they also lost a senior running back, Zach Vaughn, real early in that game, and you hate to see that happen to anybody, especially a senior. And finally, Smithville uh, went down to Loudonville and got uh, beat 48 to six. For the Smithies, uh, they're about as green as their uniforms, not much senior uh, experience on that squad. It could be a learning season through them, for them, and they have one of the toughest non-league schedules. Uh, well, in let's the turn our attention to week two. Of course, the marquee matchup is going to be Orville and Triway. The Red Riders might lead the all-time series 34-7, to but Triway got a rare win last year when they spoiled Orville's turf debut. And not only would the Titans like to open with a win on their turf, they've never beat Orville two straight games. So a lot riding on this. And really, I was just talking to one of the Titans' assistant coaches, and they said games like this can set the tone for an entire season for both teams. Uh, let's take a break, and we're, when we come back, we'll get some comments from Triway head coach Tony Lee and also senior two-way performer Cal Huffman on their thoughts on this big game. Okay, that's a cut, Dan. <laughs> or Bobby, whoever. We'll probably end up doing it, but Dan's off Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, welcome back. Welcome and, back. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay, you come back and you better, this is getting too long, so you better just give quick thoughts and then. Okay, and then look okay, at a couple yeah. of matchups you yeah. like this week. I'm just going to do one, okay. even if it's getting too long. All right. It's not as long as you think. Okay. Welcome back to the Daily Records High School Football Insider, week two. We're at Triway's Jack Miller Field. The site of this week's uh, game between the Orville Red Riders and the Triway Titans and uh, Aaron last week. Orville, real quick, Orville snapped a long nine game losing streak, which seemed like 99 to them, um, and got their first win on their own turf. A real solid debut out of junior running back Keontae Owens who uh, rushed for a couple touchdowns and had a nice big game. And uh, they really didn't have to do too much more to beat John Marshall. I'm sure they were saving some things for the Titans, but uh, it was a good positive outcome for the Red Riders. As far as Triway, obviously back here, they're practicing behind us. They're trying to fix their run defense. They gave up over 500 yards, so uh, probably one of the best rushing teams we'll see in West Holmes. So they're gonna fix that a little bit. And uh, I would expect Parker Carmichael and his young wide receiving core to kind of improve on their performance last week. And they always say, Aaron, the teams show a lot of improvement from week one to week two, so we should see that maybe from both squads Friday. Yeah, I would agree. A lot of chances to get better in week two. Um, let's take a look at the run through the rest of the matchups this week real quick. Chippewa visits Waterloo. 
Dalton at Tuslaw, great name, backyard rivalry, Hillsdale at Bucyrus, Northwestern at Black River, Norway at CBCA, Rittman at Grove City Christian, Mogador at Smithville, Ridgewood at Waynedale, Cloverleaf at Keystone, Crestview at Loudonville, West Holmes at Riverview, Worcester at Wadsworth. Um, I guess that Worcester at Wadsworth game is one of the ones that jumps out at me. I'll be real interested in, Mike. How does Worcester rebound? Coach Haas said, you know, they can either let last week's blowout loss define them and feel sorry for themselves, or they can really work to get better than that. They're also the Generals also going to be helping to open a new turf field at Wadsworth. I hear it's really nice up there at that stadium. Um, I'm also kind of interested to see how Wayne Dale does against Ridgewood, Ren Weaver, Reed Stanley, Matt Cottrell, some of the top performers as they snapped that win the season last year. Yeah, and Ridgewood is a perennial small school power, so that's a really good matchup for the Golden Bears. And Aaron, I'm interested in a couple games. Uh, Northwestern goes, uh, makes a short trip over to Black River. Last week, uh, the Huskies had a 29-point third quarter behind their big one-two uh, punch of quarterback Malachi Noletti and running back Tyler Smith. Uh, so they're going to score some points, but they're going to want to shut down Black River's uh, Andrew Vaughn. Ran for 340 yards last week in their victory over Western Reserve. So I'm sure uh, Huskies coach Mike Duke has got his going to have his defense centered around uh, stopping him. And then I think another game, uh, Chippewa going up to Waterloo under their first-year coach Michael Boley, who was at Waterloo last year. If the Chips could win that one, Aaron. You know, they only won one game in the last three years. They're already 1-0. and If they could go 2-0 and uh, into their week three game of Tusla, I think uh, you could see some excitement. They Maybe they win that game uh, to go 2-0 and and they have a ticker tape break right through downtown Doylestown for Coach Bowley. Yeah, wouldn't that be something if Chippewa and Waynedale, after combining for one win last year, could uh, both start 2-0? and Well, that's a quick look at this week's games. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Make sure you read all about Friday night's games on our Saturday Daily Record Sports Extra.